One of the things I really love about autumn, even though it's the end of the summer, is that we get this beautiful Fijoa season. And Fijoa, they seem so very New Zealand to me. And there's so many things you can do with them. They're incredibly versatile. So one of the things that I'm going to throw together today is just a really simple little eat and mess. But I'll also talk about some of the other stuff that we can do with Fijoa. And one of the things that I love to do is once I've peeled them, I don't throw the peel away because you can just pop it in a little Ziploc bag at some stage. So I'm just collecting them over here, not those end bits, that would be stupid. Uh, but you can collect them and you can just freeze them. And what happens when you freeze Fijoa um, skins is you can add them to your smoothies and you just get this most amazing flavour of Fijoa long past when the season has finished because it is a short season for Fijoa. The flavour of Fijoa has sometimes be des been described as, I don't know, it's kind of halfway between a pineapple and a guava. It's a little bit banana-y as well. And in New Zealand, they're so common to us all that I think we tend to underrate them. But for me, their jellied texture, that slight grit that you sometimes get in them, I just think they're really fantastic to cook with. I make a beautiful chutney with them, mix it with a little bit of apple for that extra bit of pectin, and uh, load it up with lots of beautiful ginger, because ginger is one of the flavours that goes with Fijoa really, really well. And uh, you make a beautiful savoury chutney. You can bake them with some pork, is a great idea, but really in baking and desserts, I think that's when they really begin to shine. The sorts of flavours that you want to be thinking about when you're baking or cooking with Fijoa, uh, I think they go incredibly well with ginger, uh, coconut, it's a really natural marriage, lovely toasted coconut, I think, and lime, you know, lots of citrus is good, but lime in particular tends to go just really, really beautifully with Fijoa. And the other one that was quite a surprise for me to discover was dark chocolate. Really, really nice with it. I mean, you might ask what isn't good with dark chocolate, but Fijoa and dark chocolate are just beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, chop these up briefly and then I'll quickly throw together a little dessert that's gonna have all of those flavors that I've just talked about. The ginger, chocolate, coconut, uh, lime zest in it in one simple pudding. When you're making things like crumbles, I think that these are a beautiful way to use a lot of Fijoa. So think about throwing a bit of coconut or a bit of lime zest into the actual crumble. Um, you've got sponges that you could make them upside down cakes. They're just beautiful with that sort of caramel, even a salted caramel kind of a top, that kind of thing. Just warmed with a little bit of honey oh, and ice cream. You wouldn't believe how beautiful that is. So a very, very versatile fruit is our Fijoa. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just take my lovely little Fijoas and throw them into a bowl here. Here we go. I think one of the things that people do when they're making eat and mess, a bit of a mistake, is to use far too much cream. So use mostly fruit and other ingredients, I think. Just spoon in some softly whipped fresh cream into here. You want enough, but not so much that that's all you're tasting. In that goes. And then look, I've got these little brandy snaps instead of meringues. You could use meringue, but I've got the little brandy snap because of course it's got that lovely gingery flavour into it. So just crunch those through and you've got the soft, that lovely fruit in there, the whipped cream, and now we've got a little crunch. And you see our mouths just love this sort of thing. They want it all. They want the texture and the flavour. Let's do another one of those just quickly in there. And these are just store-bought. Store-bought brandy snaps, you can make your own if you like, you can make your own meringues even, and then you just crush them all up, crazy. I've got some beautiful toasted coconut here, and the smell of that is just beautiful. I've just whipped that in a little fry pan, so I'm gonna chuck that in. Grate a little bit of chocolate in here. Whoop, let's just get that in. Try not to eat all of, oops, try not to eat all of the chocolate. Actually, that's stupid grating it in. I'm just gonna break up little bits of it. It's a much better idea, because again, we'll get that lovely little lump of deliciousness, a little chunk of it in our mouths. So always think about that when you're cooking, how big, how small, your chunks and hunks and all of that sort of thing, because your mouth just wants a little bit of a flavour burst. So in that goes. At the moment it might look like a kid's, a kid's party dessert, but I'm telling you, it's very sophisticated. Uh, my final flavour is my little lime zest. So let's just grab 
Now we've got a lime, so I'm just going to zest some of that in there. And lime zest is just out of this world. Of course, you can't really put the citrus juice in there because it'll just curdle the cream. But look at this. That'll do. Mm, smells like one of those old lime ice creams that you used to buy at the dairy. Stirring that up. Hear the noise of it? It's all crunchy and claggy and yummy. All right, and then what I'm going to do, it's called neat and mess for a reason, it looks a little messy, is just spoon this beautifully into some lovely little glasses. You could use small bowls, wine glasses, anything you like really. Top that up. Oh, look at that. Throw a little bit more of our lime zest on top. Get a little bit of that in there. And this time we will grate that little bit of chocolate on there. Just to give people some warning about what they're into, what they're in for. Beautiful. Throw a spoon in it. And I'd say that's a great use of feed jars.